Okay, so the, um, the hard part about any destruction scene is the pre-work that it takes. Okay, so I was, I was explaining this earlier. Um, like, if you were to just take a, let's say you actually did need to break apart a building, and you just applied a blanket um, point, you know, fracture to it, and just tried to make it work like that. Um, now, in school, maybe it would look kind of cool enough, maybe you get some interest there, fine, it broke, but in production, that would completely fall apart because uh, people would be like, well, we need it to be more detailed, uh, I need it to look less like rocks, I need, and, and you'd go around and around and around, and people would get frustrated, and, and they, they'd like try to give it to different artists and all kinds of stuff. Basically, how good your simulation is depends on how good the pieces are going into it. So if you really take the time, and if it's a building, you, you fracture the metal differently, and you fracture the glass differently, and you control the sizes of how big the chunks are, and you, you assign the appropriate weights to everything, like densities and things like that, and sizes, then the second you plug it into your sim, um, and the sim is only simming the part that you need, then your sim's gonna look just fine. If you don't do that, if you don't spend the week it takes to do that stuff, it's going to take a week, okay, minimum, to really get a good sense of how to break something apart. And that's without any simulation. If you spend that week and you really do a good job of fracturing that thing, and in the old days they used to have the modeling department fracture it. Now they don't, unfortunately. Now we have to do that as effects artists. But they used to actually, like on Mummy 3, when I broke apart with the horse, like this horse was running and it fell apart, um, they actually took the time to model those fractures, okay? But uh, now they don't do that. Now you have to do that. Now Houdini can do it, so they go, okay, um, effects is going to fracture it. Yep, so we have to fracture it now. But uh, the, the, th the theory is the same. Uh, take the time to set up all the good things going into your effect, and your effect will be good too. If you don't take the time, uh, bad stuff in, you're going to get bad stuff out. It's never going to look right. Okay, so just, uh, you guys did great today by actually taking the time and learning the setup and all your buildings and fractures look, look good for what we're doing. They don't look like a good building fracture, but it looks, for the example, they look good, okay? And uh, now we're ready to fracture. Now we're ready to actually sim. So this is the fun part. It's the part that you spend the week and they're like, hey, I get to sim now. So let's do that. All right, so uh, we've got all these pieces, but um, DOPS, uh, Dynamics operators. This is a new context we're going to learn today. Um, it it wants to know um, like like all of these are large chunk ID blah blah. So I need to do a new connectivity to get everything to be new pieces. All right, because I want I want all these pieces to be a different value. Okay, so I'm going to do a new connectivity stop down here. You can even call this something like DOPS chunk. And now this is going to be a primitive because DOPS likes to know the polygon chunk. It doesn't want to know point, point stuff. It wants to know polygon stuff because it's colliding. So I'll call this, let's say, DOPS chunk. That's a simple name for it, right? Okay. So now with my DOPS chunks, I'll preview the DOPS chunks. Okay, now I can see that I have something different on each DOPS chunk. If I were to use large chunk ID, see, so if I use large chunk ID, then this, this doesn't work anymore. Okay, down here, and that's the part I really want to work. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so make a new a new connectivity down here. Okay. Okay. Um, now I'm actually going to change my fracture bit because I actually think this is too high res for just for right now. We can up the res later. That's the great thing about being procedural. So we need more detail. We can just do a button. We don't have to rework our system. But just for speed's sake and showing the example, I'm going to decrease my resolution a bit. So instead of uh, I'm going to do like 50 points here. And uh, for this guy, I'm going to do uh, 15. Uh, 20 is probably good, but I'll do 15. 
do a bit more. All right. Okay, so ready to go. Now I'm gonna go and make a DOPS network. Ta da! Okay. Plug that in. Now, um, just like particles, just because I plug it in doesn't mean it's gonna do anything. Okay. Um, DOPS is a self contained framework of Houdini, and um, it has a completely new set of operators. There's a lot of them in there. Um, ignore, ignore most of them for now. Okay. Um, a lot of this stuff is, um, in, especially in Houdini 12, is for the very, very new and quickly expanding area of fire simulation. So you can see where a lot of this stuff is like gas, net fetched. I have no idea what that node does. Okay. Um, I know what that one does. Um, let's see. And it has new bullet stuff in there too. I haven't really played with it much yet. Okay. So. Um, for right now, we're just going to use a few of them. Okay, don't don't let that intimidate you. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we're going to set up a basic bouncing ball first, and then our our fracture will be pretty much the same thing. All right. So first, I'll start with an RBD object. Okay. And notice it has a creation frame. So it, it didn't appear at first because my, my time slider was out here. So creation frame is one. All right. And I'll do a ground plane. There we go. And uh, I'll raise this object off the ground, give it some velocity. OK. That's the initial state, by the way. Uh, okay, so we have RBD object. Let's see, we have um, ground. Okay, now I don't want the ground to move. So this would be what would be considered a static object. So for this, I'm going to use a static solver. All the static solver does is pretty much pass data through, but it still wants to know it's a static, you know, being solved as a static thing, because you don't want it to like get picked up by something else and solved as an RBD or something. Uh, when I say RBD, I mean rigid body uh, dynamics. Okay, so okay, so that's a static solver, and over here, um, I want this guy to have some gravity. So I'm gonna use some gravity force, and an RBD solver, rigid body dynamics solver. It's gonna solve RBDs. Now the great thing about DOPS is it's a very open framework. So you can have multiple solvers, like it could be a pyro solver, you can have a wire solver. Okay, you have all these different solvers and you can, you can do all kinds of, of very, very um, accurate and advanced things. Um, that's what you know, studios pay the big bucks on effects movies to do, is, is um, all these different simulations and things like that. They look cool. Okay. For right now, we're just gonna make a ball bounce. So I'm going to merge them together. Now, merge in DOPS does something a little different than it does in other contexts. Uh, it's actually a way of controlling the relationship. So if I plug my static solver in here and my RBD solver in here, and it has, by default, left inputs affect right inputs, that means that this guy is going to affect this guy, but this guy is not going to affect this guy. Okay. If you want it to be a mutual relationship, okay. Uh, mutual, it's right up there. Okay. Um, so, for instance, if we had like another static object, we could use a merge up here. Say we had two ground planes. I don't know why you'd have that, but. And then in this case, you'd have uh, none for the relationship and, and uh, say mutual. Okay. Okay, so for right now, just ground plane, static, rigid body, gravity, RBD, collide with left input, and uh, let's see what it does. Yay! All right, uh, you can experiment with things like friction. So let's say we decrease the friction a lot. This is under physical properties, by the way, or the bounce. Say I have a bounce of zero, 
and a friction of 0.01. Let's see what happens now. Look at that. It's more like uh, sliding on ice or something, right? Okay. So it's really fun to just like spend a few hours and really just explore a new sim package. And this is a very, very good sim package. I would say uh, one of the best used out there. And, um, you know, just experiment around with all of the, you know, different settings you can use. Um, one thing uh, that's very good to do is to preview what you're colliding with. So uh, under collisions surface, I'm sorry, volume, uh, you can just show the collision geometry. And this is actually what's going to be colliding. So it has to actually form a surface out of everything you spit into it. So this becomes really important when you have like airplane fragments and things like that. They could be very skinny or long. You have to really have good surfaces to collide with. So you might have to increase your resolution or change your method or things like that. Um, also, uh, the difference between colliding with points and edges is actually pretty notable. I personally think edges should be default because it just works a lot better under most circumstances. So, yeah. All right, so let's get the ball bouncing first, and then from there, um, instead of the RBD object, it's just a small step up to use an RBD, RBD fracture object. But it's really the same system. Okay, so let's get a basic ball to bounce first, and then uh, then we'll we'll apply it to our building. Yeah. So the good news is that blowing apart a building is not really that much more difficult than uh, bouncing a ball. Uh, it's the same basic idea. Uh, you have things that are going to collide. You have things that are affecting the collide. That's pretty much all we need. Okay. So instead of uh, now we want the ground plane. Ground plane's good. Uh, so we can leave that. Uh, I'm going to add another RBD object but I'm not going to use it as an RBD object. I'm going to use it as a static object. Uh, that's the really cool thing is that even if it says wire object, you could use a wire object as an RBD object, or you can use this as that. Um, it's all about how you solve it. It's not about what object type is. You can use cloth constraints on wires, okay? It's how you apply it and solve it, evaluate it, that determines what it is. So here I'm using an RBD object. I'm going to call this uh, saucer. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna point it to some geometry, okay? So that's gonna be my flying saucer. There we go. There's the flying saucer, okay? Now, it's not moving or anything, okay? Um, we can say use object transform. All right, now it's got the object transform, but still, it's not moving. It's not being solved yet. Okay. So if I were to merge this, okay, okay, it's being solved, but it's still not moving, and that's because um, I don't have, I have a different type of information in DOPS. Okay, this is being created from the geometry, but after that, after it's created, we haven't really told it what to do at all, okay? So I'm going to use the uh, RBD keyframe active to actually animate this object, okay? So you can actually animate a rigid body and blend between simulation and animated if you want to. It's really useful sometimes. Um, but here I'm just going to use it to straight up just uh, apply a motion to this object, okay? So here under uh, use object path, I'm going to pit one, and object path, I'm going to set to my saucer, because that's what has the animation, right? Okay, let's see what it does now. Still nothing. Um, let's see. Active value. There we go. Okay, so if it's an active object, that means that it's being simulated. If it's not an active object, it means that it's going to inherit the motion. Okay. Now, I, you might ask, why didn't I just use deforming geometry? Okay, okay. so we can say uh, up here, use deforming geometry. And that'll work too. The problem with this is that it doesn't have velocities on it. 
it's calculating a deformation on every frame, so you're going to get very inaccurate collisions, and it has to compute the collision geometry on every frame as well. You do not want that. Let me show you the um, actual geometry it uses to collide with. Okay, not very good. All right, or it's being recomputed anyway. I'm surprised it works so well. Um, so instead of that, we want to turn off use deforming geometry. We want to actually apply the object motion to it. So now it's only computed on the first frame. And after that, it's just doing its thing. Okay? So I've got a saucer and my ground plane going into the static solver. And uh, just as a general rule, you want the moving stuff after the still stuff. So I'm going to put the ground plane first and the saucer second into the merge. The relationship is going to be no change, none. Okay? Because we don't have a relationship here, really. It's just all just, just in space. Okay. And uh, for visualization's sake, um, I'm going to make the ground plane a lot bigger. It'll still collide with the ground, even if it doesn't show it. But I just want to make my grid size. Let's try 200. Okay. Uh, saucer, um, I'm going to put the, um, the bounce to zero. And uh, let's see, what else? Edge collisions. So surface, edges. You use the edges instead of the, uh, the points. Better collision. All right. All right, I think I'm done with that part. Now, instead of my ball, Okay, so instead of this ball down here, I want to use the building. So with the RBD object, I'm going to delete that. I want an RBD fractured object. RBD fractured object. And it really just it provides a way to make many, many RBD objects at once. That's all it does. It's the same as an RBD object. It's just duplicated. Okay, so uh, creation frame still one. And uh, I'm going to use my... Um, my input up here, okay? So for that, when it says stops path, I'm gonna use op input path. And I'm gonna point to the parent, which is this guy. So op input path, dot, dot, dot. And uh, this will evaluate as a number by default, so we don't want that. We want it to evaluate as a string. Uh, which is text. So I'm going to use little back ticks here. Uh, if this doesn't make any sense, oh, and uh, up input path, I need to provide which input, which input zero. So it'll evaluate to that. If this doesn't make sense, then you can go ahead and just select uh, whatever your input is. So you could label it like output building. Output fractured building or something like that, and you could just select that as well. See, same thing. Okay, okay. so uh, we've imported this, but uh, odds are it's not really knowing what to do yet. Um, right now, it's being split apart by this name attribute, which it doesn't really have. Okay, we want to fracture by a group mask. Okay. So here I have this attribute called uh, dops chunk, or you can call it whatever you'd like, but basically um, your final result, you put connectivity on it and give it, a, give it an attribute. Okay. So I want to turn each unique value of this attribute into a group. So for that, I can use the partition saw. Okay. And uh, the partition saw allows you to specify variables. So I'll call this chunk underscore dops chunk. Okay. And what that did is it actually made all these groups here. See that? 
So it just it takes in whatever string you give it, and you can use you can use this kind of stuff. Okay. So now over here, I'm gonna say um, group mask. I'll call it say uh, chunk underscore star. Does anybody know what star means? In pr in computer speak, what is the star? Yeah, there's a certain term we use for it, and not just in Houdini. Uh, in all, pretty much most of computer programs or things that do this, it's called a wild card. Okay, so a wild card means okay, maybe it could be chunk zero, maybe it could be chunk one, maybe it could be chunk two. Okay, so I'm going to use chunk star because that's my groups. See chunk 447, chunk 302. Okay. So I'm going to use chunk star, and that's my group mask. Okay, and if I look at my uh, my my uh, surface, then collisions show collision guide geometry. This might take a while. Yeah, turn this on with care. <laughs> That's not too happy with me. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's actually uh, computing the collision surface for each chunk. Okay. When you use that group mask, it's saying group one. Here's a collision surface. Group two, here's a collision surface. Group three, here's a collision surface. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off. Okay. Uh, with this guy, uh, once again, um, balance, I'm gonna set that to zero. Uh, collisions, I'm gonna use edges. That's about it. Okay. Plug that in. Uh, one more important thing uh, with like um, RBDs in general is that they usually have a bit of drag associated with with events. Like um, it's going to hit at an initial speed, but it's going to slow down because we're in the atmosphere, right? We're with we're, we have we have air around us. We have all these kind of things. It's going to be sliding against the ground. So drag actually is a way of decreasing force over time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll put a drag on there as well. There we go. Okay. And let's see what we get. Good call. <laughs> oh, one more thing is I don't want it now. The gravity is on these pieces, okay? So I don't actually don't want them to fall first. I I actually should have it only being created on the impact frame, right? So I'm going to change this to uh, let's see what was my impact frame. My impact frame was 39. So I'm just going to set this to 39. Turn off real time. There we go. There we are. Yeah, guys, if you still have your real time toggle on, turn it off because it'll try to compute in real time and it can't keep up, so it ends up freezing. You can do it. Yeah. 
Now it has to do a lot of collision calculations on the initial impact, so it's it's computing all these different forces and and uh, collisions with this and that. Um, it'll speed up once the pieces start to separate out a bit. But that's the general idea. We've got a got a sim now. So um, so yeah, I'll stop this for a second. Now if you hit the stop button, uh, it'll still go to the next frame, so it might take a while. But yeah, that's the process. So fractured object, uh, the group mask is really the important thing here. Okay. Then uh, gravity, drag, RBD, same as we did with the ball. Okay. Uh, with the saucer, we're adding an RBD object. And then we're putting the RBD keyframe on there, and we're using the object motion. We're applying it to that, so it moves. Uh, merge those guys together, static, uh, keep the collision relationship, and uh, that's, the, that's the effect.